Hello everybody, what is going on? This is Sorry in Advance, and in today's video, I'm going to show you how I am preparing for the House of Wolves. Basically, it's three or four simple steps. Right before I start off, I would like to say that I am probably not the greatest source for it, but many of the ideas that I propose are very, very strong, suited toward what's the next DLC, and how it is going to go. So basically, the three main things you're going to need are experience, glimmer, and then the actual materials to get up to there. So, how I am preparing for the DLC is I am starting to load up my vault with materials. I have 148 radiant shards, 188 radiant energy, 422 ascendant jars, and 298 ascendant energies. Now these do not matter that much. In fact, those are probably one of the kind of dumb things to have. The really important stuff is actually the axiomatic beads, the house banners, the silken codexes, the network codes, and a few other things that enemies actually drop. They will drop little Illuminati pyramid thingies and then sometimes you will get these items the cryptarch actually decodes them for 200 glimmer a piece in fact let me grab this house banner and show you so the house banners give you 200 glimmer each and you could hold on to as many of these at a time as you would like so i am starting to load up on these currently i have about seven or eight thousand worth of glimmer that is not a lot but it is getting up there um, basically what this is going to allow you to do is it is going to push your glimmer level above twenty five thousand now one other thing that i would suggest doing is going to your postmaster and filling all 20 slots up with public event packages now each public event package drops 5,000 experience every time that you open it and it gives you a little bit more glimmer as well so that is also a added benefit to it now every day that you do a public event a new public event package will go inside of your postmaster and then you can use that Another way of getting experience would be doing the bounties for the days. As you can see, this one gives you 5,000 experience when you turn it in. This one also gives you 5,000, and this one gives you 2,500. So if you store 10 5,000 XP bounties, you will have 50,000 glimmer. If you do this on three characters, you will have 150,000 experience. Now this will basically give you about one and maybe a quarter for exotics and you can equip two exotics at a time so that would be about four exotics that you could upgrade with the added experience that you get through the public event packages you could about double that so now the only real things that you have to worry about are glimmer and experience um, what you could end up doing as well is pushing up the level of your dead orbit, your future wall crawl, your new monarchy, and your vanguard. If you get these all up to 2400 rep, rep reputation, yeah, that's the word. If you get these right under 2500 at rank 3, you get your first package. If you push them all up to just under three you will get a package as soon as you put in one mission for that faction Underway. the packages that you are given Goodbye. from the postmaster are already decided so like if i was to have a engram right now it is already decided it will be a dark blue engram however if you level these up to two and just barely under three you can get that package after the House of Wolves drops. Now, after the House of Wolves drops, 
you will get a package, it will go to your postmaster, and it will have not been decided in the Dark Below time period, so you will get a House of Wolves package. This House of Wolves package can be reforged, as shown in the live stream that Deed showed from the gunsmith, and then you can get whatever roll you would like on the weapon, or whatever you get. All gear in the game will be level 34 gear, and all guns will be upgraded to 365. So one other thing that I'm doing currently is I'm leveling up all of the old weapons that I enjoyed. So Fatebringer, really, really strong gun. Would suggest using that all the time. Got that 300. Vision of Confluence, I know it's a good gun, so I leveled that up to 300. Praetorian's Foil is going to be a very, very good gun when you upgrade it. Galahorn, enough said. Song of Viryu is an arc weapon, and I believe that that is going to be very, very strong in the next DLC. The Fourth Horseman, since the last buff, has gotten very, very good for me. It takes down one enemy like nothing else, and that is why I enjoy this gun. I'd suggest keeping this gun. If you get it, it will be very strong against captains with arc shields in the next DLC. The only other gun that I would suggest saving and leveling up, which I do not actually have in my inventory, is the Icebreaker, the correct measure. And that'd probably be about it. You don't really need any other guns leveled up, just because they will not be as good. Correct a measure, very, very good void weapon right now. I still use it in all of my void week nightfalls, and I use it fairly often in just run around. Um, most of the exotic guns aren't very necessary. I would say that if you're going to use a hand cannon, then probably upgrade either the Hawk Moon or the Last Word. If you're going to upgrade a pulse rifle, I would say the Red Death. Anything that is good right now, upgrade. Anything that you suspect will be good or is fairly good and has arc, I would level up. Uh, Fatebringer, Black Hammer, and Galahorn is currently the best setup. I would say that probably Hunger of Crota and Icebreaker might be slightly better in the next DLC, but alas, we will have to wait and see. Now one other thing that I have done is I have leveled up all of my Vault of Glass gear. Because I enjoy the Vault of Glass more, I end up running the Vault of Glass more. So I leveled up this gear, so when I hit level 34, with the Battle Cage of Copper, the Brazen Grips, the Wrath, and the Greaves, I will be able to do Vault of Glass with the perks that this armor drops. Now this is very smart depending on what raid that you play, but it depends on how you like to run it. Now finally, what I would suggest doing is creating three characters and getting them all to 32. Now if you don't have the time, well then it might take you a little bit longer to run these DLCs. Now, I have gotten three 32s, and currently I have a Hunter, a Titan, and a Warlock. So, what I plan on doing, the day that the DLC releases, I plan on doing it once on my Titan, once on my Warlock, and once on my Hunter, that is the Prison of Elders. And then, as soon as I do it all three times, and I complete it all three times, I'll delete one of my 32s. More than likely it will be my Hunter, or my Warlock, because the Titan is a character that I would like to get to 32. So, I can level up a character in about 5 hours, and I'm going to delete one of my 32s, put all of their gear inside the vault, and then re-level them back to 32. The reason I'm going to do this is so that way I can play the Prison of Elders more than 3 times a week. I have done this in the previous weeks with my Titan, and it's a way of getting extra gear. That is how I hit level 32 in one week on my Hunter when I first started playing this game, and that is how I have gotten most of the exotics that I have inside of my vault. So other than that, that is really all that I am doing to prepare myself for the next DLC. 
Um, if you guys would like to post anything in the comments on how you are preparing, I would like to see those comments. And that's going to be all, guys. Thank you for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Adios.